and uh, writer, homemaker, and uh, also you like profanity. So I mean, who doesn't like profanity? Bad people. Bad people, but you know that's okay. Um, you have won, and it looks like a, a whole slew of awards for your writing, which is fantastic. And you have novels, you have a novella, you have short stories. Um, so what I usually like to ask is I, I say everybody was talking about your careers or talk about your writing. But in, in this case, let's talk about your, your love for writing. And how did that start? Um, I don't really remember it starting. I've always written stuff like as long as I can remember. Um, it's just kind of a thing I do, I guess. Just like just like that. Just uh, was one of those things as a kid growing up. And then you always written um, your first let's say your first short story that really stands out to you. Was it something you published or something that you wrote uh, pre-publishing? The first thing I wrote that really stands out was when I was a little girl, I did a, a stage adaptation of the rock opera Tommy by The Who, which is a really bizarre thing to, for a little girl to do. Um, but I made my siblings act in it and it was like a whole thing. It was really like deeply disturbing. Um, I'm glad that my that I had parents who were pretty cool, uh, but um yeah, that was the first thing that I re that really stands out in my mind that I was like, okay, that's the okay. thing that I did. Okay, so cr creativity was there, uh, kind of outside the, the norm of things, which is great. And uh, fast forward to uh, what was the what was the first piece of work that you published? Um, I think probably a poem in like a um in like a weird like community anthology when I was a little girl something like that it wasn't anything like serious Nothing. I don't I don't remember what the first like professional thing I published was so then then I'll take us back to what was the most recent thing you published um you have a couple of books out um and if I'm not mistaken you also won an award 2023 winner for uh best monster feature script so you have, you have a lot of things going on um what was the last book you just published it was uh 2020 it says 2019 on your website oh no um so my best friend athena was published last year and then this year um in on february 6th my newest book is coming out and that's uh fanny fitzpatrick and the brother problem mm. and that's the sequel to my best friend athena and that's my my middle grade series interesting um and you also have which which i'm looking at here you also have a cannibal's guide to fasting yes uh, that came out in september 6 2022 uh, tell yes. us a little bit about that. Um, so that's my adult horror novel, uh, horror comedy, I guess you'd call it. It's a world where cannibalism is viral. And my uh, protagonist is a dude named Igor. And he's a big, scary bodybuilder with like a spider tattooed on his face. And he's um, he's also infected with viral cannibalism. So he's a scary dude. But he has a heart of gold and he's actually a scientific genius. And so he's trying to come up with a cure for the viral cannibalism. Um, he discovers that his brother is running a cannibal rights cult and they're like um, basically trying to take over the world and make cannibalism the, the law of the land. So he has to kind of intervene. Um, so it's, it's, it's a good book, I think. And, and, and it, it, yeah. And you would, if you compare that to my best friend, Athena right now, <laughs> what what I, I'm looking at both of them and I'm like, okay, these are completely different. Uh tell yes. us a little bit about that. <laughs> so my best friend Athena is my kids' book that has no cannibalism, is it? Um, it's got it's basically about an 11-year-old girl named Fanny, and she happens to be best friends with the reincarnation of the goddess Athena. Oh. And one day Athena loses her temper and turns the school bully into a cockroach. And they can't find the cockroach. So she needs Fanny's help. They have to find him and turn him back into a boy. So that's kind of the main plot of it. But there's other stuff that goes on. There's like a beauty pageant. Um, there's a lot of stuff about friendship. And it, it's um, it's like a comedic fantasy, I would say. And it's more target towards, you would say, teen teenagers? I would say tweens, like 10 to 12 age. Yeah. Yeah. And um, in terms of your cover art for your books, who who normally does your cover art? Uh, my publisher, they have like a in-house art department that does that. So, 
Right. So, yeah. So I spoke to somebody recently that's uh, published, that was published with Cinnabar Moth. And um, I believe they said the same thing. If not yeah. for some, sometimes uh, you know, somebody tells a story like, um, actually, I was going to ask you a segue into this, finding a publisher or finding an agent. Those are very difficult things. So how did you come across uh, Cinnabar Moth? Um, well, I actually was just querying around the script for um, Cannibal's Guide to Fasting. And I queried one company that said, you know, we mostly do like more hard sci-fi type stuff. Mm -hmm. But why don't you try submitting it to these guys? Um, and he, I guess he knew someone at Cinnabar Mob. And so I submitted it to them and they liked it. So I've heard, I've heard good things and they've helped you with uh, any like editing and polishing or their feedback. Oh yeah. No, it, um, pretty much after you send them your book that they, they go over it and they'll come back to you with things that need to be changed or, um, fixed. And then you make those fixes. <laughs> right. And, uh, usually from what I hear, usually good, uh, suggestions from these guys. Um, have you ever, have you ever looked into getting an agent at all? Cause that's usually a lot of writers dreams to find an agent that really, uh, likes their work or really wants to push to work. Have you ever had that opportunity? No, not really. I mean, I've queried a few um, agents, obviously. I think every writer has gone through that process, but um, I haven't, I haven't got one. So <laughs> yeah. And then well, I found the publisher so I can publish directly with them. So that works. There, there you go. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, and moving into your script writing, tell us a little bit about your award and your best monster feature script that you for the award oh, that yeah. you won. yes <laughs> so that is mammoth uh so that is a kind of horror sci-fi comedy again basically it is about um so she's a cabbage farmer she's very taciturn she lives in texas and she somehow has managed to clone herself a woolly mammoth and she's got it and she she just wants it to be her pet she loves the mammoth she's friends with the mammoth but then of course word leaks out people find out that she's done this thing and uh, three men want this mammoth. One of them is a hunter. One of them is a celebrity chef. Hmm. And the other one is a guy who is into bestiality. So they all want the woolly mammoth for their own hmm. reasons. And they decide that they're going to band together and do a woolly mammoth heist. But the, uh, the woman who has created the woolly mammoth is very smart and she does not want these men to get their hands on her woolly mammoth and um so shenanigans ensue so it's it's a really fun script um i've never i don't think i've ever talked to anyone that's actually did script writing before so how, how what's that like what's the process for script writing what do you usually aim for in terms of a land um for length, you want it kind of around 100 pages, approximately. The idea is that each page equates to about a minute of screen time. Mm -hmm. So 100 pages would be like a 100-minute movie. Uh, it can be a little over, a little under, depending on um, your genre and obviously the story you're trying to tell. Um, it's, a, it's a really fun process. I like script writing, um, especially because I tend to be a very dialogue-heavy writer. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you know, obviously, when you're writing a script or a stage play, it's it's mostly dialogue. Right. Um, so. In the terms of that, <clears throat> so you won the award for it. Is that is that something where they say, okay, this is a fantastic script review award, and possibly we're going to try to turn this into a movie or we're going to send this somewhere? Is that ever on the radar? That would be lovely if that's how that works. <laughs> but yeah, no, um, pretty much the awards are just good for like uh, networking or if you meet someone at the festival that maybe wants to get in touch with you or work with you, then that's great. Um, it's a thing that you can put on a one sheet or a resume or whatever right. when you're trying to sell the script. Um, it's a thing that looks good and opens some doors, but it definitely doesn't guarantee so any kind of right and so it's kind of like art in that sense if you if you painted a, a painting on a canvas you could sell it for x amount it's the same thing with your script you can sell your script to potential somebody who wants to produce it um i would imagine something similar in those lines uh, correct yeah, me so, if i'm wrong no that's about how it works a kind of are you option it so um i did option one script 
um, that is in pre-production now. We'll see if that actually gets made. But um, yeah, pretty much you get some producers interested, you get a director interested, and then everyone starts working together and trying to fund fund it and find people who will invest in it because it's very, very expensive to make a movie. So um, yeah, just kind of a lot of moving pieces have to come together for a movie to actually get made. And right. your script is only kind of the very first part of that chain. So really your job as a screenwriter is just to try to get people excited about the script and to want to make it. And that's hard if you're uh, not great at self-promotion, which mm. I'm <laughs> Yeah, self self-promotion is very difficult. Um, I would say that a lot of people today use uh, social media um, mm -hmm. and in terms of maybe getting an agent or if you didn't have an agent or the publisher, sometimes depending on their reach, if they're small, if they're, if they're big, they're able to do a lot of that stuff for you. But if they're not and they don't have to, it's kind of hard to really, really get those connections unless you're heavily networked. But yeah, uh, um, I'm perusing your social media. And you also have something on your Facebook called Co Cosmas and Damien. Yes, Cosmas and Damien. That's uh, my uh, yeah stage play that got published uh, in November. So tell us, tell us a little bit about that. So that's um, a historical comedy, very wildly inaccurate. So um, I, I'm not anymore, but I was raised Catholic. And so you hear like a lot of these stories about the saints. And I don't know if you're familiar with Cosmas and Damien, but they were twin saints and they're supposedly credited with doing the very first limb transplant. Hmm. And so this is kind of a play about them and uh, how they managed to cut off someone's leg. And so another leg on it, um, it doesn't go very well. And I'm, I kind of have them as like manic bros who are like all in for Jesus. And it's like, um, it's really high energy and funny and um, very dark humor. You, you definitely have a twist for uh for creativity for uh a flair for creativity is what i wanted to say just based on what the stories you're telling me so it's very it's very cool um and so you have a variety you have, you have novels you have scripts you have uh, short stories and going through you're on facebook and that is dana uh dana hammer author's page uh also, you're on Cinnabar Moth on their author series. They could find you there. A mm -hmm. um, little blurb about you. You're on Amazon as well. So if anybody wants to check you out on Amazon, uh, your books are there. Fanny Fitzpatrick and the Brother Problem. My, be <clears throat> Sorry. My best friend, Athena and the Cannibal's Guide to Fasting. Those three are there. And also, if anybody wants to check out Goodreads, uh, you're getting some good reviews and good readings right there, which is always a good place to go. And... Um, the other thing I wanted to mention, I I thought I found you somewhere else. I may be wrong. Uh, are there any other social media or uh, digital platforms you're currently on that I missed? Uh, technically, I'm on TikTok. <laughs> um, I have a few videos on there that I just kind of do for fun. Um, not really much about my writing, though. But you can find me on TikTok, uh, Dana Hammer there. Um, but that's pretty much it. I'm not super great at social media. I don't really love twitter or those other platforms so that's right. okay um well i'm on twitter mostly and uh i suck terribly at tiktok and instagram and all those but um t twitter is generally where i where i put out my content so whenever this episode comes out i will share with everybody um and maybe some links to your book and, and different things like that if you had to pitch to some potential readers something to pick out of your array of work what would you tell them to start with first um if you're an adult i would suggest you start with cannibal's guide to fasting and if you are not an adult go to my best friend athena and if you like short things and you're not really a novel reader i'd go cosmos and damien good plugs i love it and i always give authors and guests the last or the final words the last words um, if you had to give any advice to writers or authors, anybody starting out, what would you tell them? Uh, don't be afraid to suck. Just write, just do the thing. And it's okay if it's bad. Perfect. I love it. Uh, awesome. I think we covered everything. Um, you did say before we finally, before we wrap up, wrap up, you did say, 
uh, outside of the the script award that you won, you from what I read, you, you've you've won several awards. I think almost forty, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, what would say outside of the most recent one? What would you say is one that you really stood out to you? Um. Well, the first award I won for writing obviously was really special to me because it kind of um it made me feel like I was on the right track. Like maybe I did have a little talent, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then um it was really cool to uh be a Eugene O'Neill semi-finalist just because that's a really prestigious award. Um but I would say, yeah, the the first award I won was probably my my favorite and the most important. When did it, when was that? I guess that would have been 2018, 2019, something like that. It's awesome. Um, yeah. I <clears throat> never won in any awards such as for literary content or different things like that. I, I did, I did submit, uh, I think a name in elementary school for a newspaper and, uh, they picked me and I won a certificate or something, but that's all oh, I got. But, uh, there you go. That's awesome. And uh, everybody, check out DanaHammer.com. Uh, you can find her links there. You can find her work there. She is also on CinnabarMoth's website.com. All her links are there and on Amazon and Facebook. So, uh, Dana, thank you so much for having a little chat with me today. Thanks and, for having uh, me. Hey, my pleasure. And uh, I, I love doing this. And I will definitely share your work on Twitter. And hopefully get some people coming your way awesome thank you awesome thank you everyone for being a part of the mr mike show if you enjoyed this episode please consider subscribing to your platform of choice for more updates and exclusive content visit our website at www.mrmikemtl.com stay relaxed stay inspired and next time.